Mine is called the Eyeball Killer because he loved the eyeballs of his victims, of everybody actually. He just loved eyeballs. So that's him looking like an eyeball killer. His name is Char Charles Albright. And um, he was born in Texas, Amarillo, Texas, in 1933. And he was adopted by a school teacher that um, accelerated his education. So he got to skip two grades because of her. Damn. Um, his ad I know, right? <laughs> his adoptive mother, um, Del, was strict. And she was really smothering. And she sometimes dressed him in girls' clothes. Oh. Um, tied him to the bed as punishment, and when he went on dates in high school, she would chaperone. What? Oh, she right. Was, that <laughs> suffocated. Was like that. Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? That's crazy. Uh, when he was um eleven years old, his mom enrolled him in taxidermy because he used to like kill little animals, like small animals. Oh, which we already know that's a sign he's probably a psychopath. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's the first sign. Yeah, so, yeah, so he practices, like, dissecting, skinning, stuffing on dead birds. Um, The only thing his mother didn't buy him was taxidermy eyes because they were really expensive. So she would give him buttons instead. Um, So that's probably where he got his, like, obsession with eyeballs. He just never had real eyeballs to use in his taxidermy. Yeah. Um, so like at 15 he graduated high school lucky him and <laughs> he went to North Texas University and he spent like months in prison though most of his like youth because he would steal a lot like or received stolen goods so it was like petty thefts that he would have um when he was released he went again to um the Arkansas State uh Teachers College where he studied anatomy and he was trying to major in his pre-med. Um, so it looked like he was smart. He knew, like, what he was doing. He he had, like, well, he probably didn't have the motivation, but he had, like, the skills to, like, get a degree and become maybe even, like, a doctor. But again, like, he kept getting found with, like, stolen stuff or stealing. So he got expelled from his college and ended up in jail again. But for some reason, like, each time he was in jail, it was for only, like, a year or two years. So he would talk his way out, and they would give him, like, a tiny, like, little sentence. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so when he came out of jail again, since he didn't finish his pre-med studies, he just um, falsified his degree. So he literally went and photoshopped himself a degree. Damn. Um, forging signatures, yeah, he got all the documents he needed, so he made himself a fake bachelor's and a fake master's degree so he went and he went and like got good jobs but he always ended up getting fired from it. he couldn't keep a job but um he they also said like some some of his friends somebody that knew him in college said that he did pull a, a creepy prank on his college girlfriend where he cut out all the eyes from her photographs and pasted them around campus what Damn. yeah he's creepy <laughs> Oh, but um, I don't know if that was the same girlfriend he married, but he did marry a college girlfriend, and he did end up having a daughter with her. Um, he kept going again and again to jail. He just wouldn't leave jail, but um, he did divorce her in like 1974. But he um, oh, and his mother died after like in 1981. She died, and I guess it all went downhill when she died because um, he was sexually I guess molesting and uh like his family's nine year old daughter. Um, I don't know for how long, but he did he was accused for that and he he was prosecuted and he said he pled guilty only because he didn't want it um he didn't want it to like turn into something big. Damn. So but then he was saying I'm not I'm not guilty though. I just didn't want it to turn into something big. So yeah. he pled guilty but yet he was still um he didn't receive that much time in jail. I think he was only on probation. I I don't know how he kept getting out of all these jails with like a serious crime with this one. But he he was in probation. So he ended up meeting another woman in 1985 and he invited her to come live with them. And since he couldn't keep a job, um she ended up like paying for all his stuff. So she was supporting him. 
Damn. And I guess he just wanted her for the financial support because he pretended to have a paper route where he would deliver newspaper um, mm -hmm. every morning. But instead of delivering newspaper, he would just go visit prostitutes Damn. without his wife knowing. Yeah. Damn. So he was literally using her for money. That sucks. Nikki Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so soon after that, in 1990, is when he committed his first murder. Um, it was December 13th, and Dallas police found a body of a 33 year old sex worker, uh, Mary Lou Pratt, and she was dumped in a field naked to the waist, and she was beaten up, and she was shot in the back of the head. Um, Damn. she, when they, yeah, when they were, when they performed an autopsy on her, they found that her eyes had been carefully removed. So somebody with like precise, um, tools and knowing how to disconnect like the eyeball had done it to her. And she just had no eyeballs. That's it. Like she was just beating up shot and no eyeballs. And two months later is when they found his second victim, um, in... February 10th, 1991. So it was almost a year later. And this was of a 27 year old sex worker, again, Susan Beth. Um, and she was uh, discovered on the same like road that he would live on. And she was also nearly nude. She was shot three times. And there was also um, her eyes were removed from her head, the same way that the other ladies was removed. Damn. Uh, yeah, I know. He's crazy. <laughs> um, and um, again, in March 19th, 1991, so a couple months later, they found another woman. But this one, she was propped up against a tree in front of a school. She was 45 years old, and she was also a sex worker. And her eyes were also removed from her head. So they knew it was the same killer this entire time because he would remove her um, eyes from her head. Yeah. So, like, the police were like, okay, there's a pattern here. They're all sex workers, and all their eyeballs are missing. So, yeah. they went out around asking, yeah, all, like, the sex workers, like, have you guys encountered, like, any suspicious men, any violent men? And there was this uh, one lady, her name was Brenda Smith, who was also a sex worker, who <laughs> um, recently escaped this violent customer of hers um, when she sprayed him with mace, and she claimed... um that she claimed that um, he was like a regular, like he would come in, like visit a couple of them. Um, there was another woman called Veronica Rodriguez who also said that she was almost raped and almost killed by a white man in Dallas, near um, where near where Mary Pratt was killed. So they were like, oh, okay, so it might be the same guy. He was adopted, so his parents did have good money because you know they were school teachers. Um, so all like the properties when the mother and the father died went to him. So he had two houses. He would rent one and he would live on the other one. And um, the one of the sex workers that got away from him, she ran to the guy um, that was renting one of his house. And she's like, oh, somebody almost like killed me, blah, blah, blah. And when they found out like where that guy lived, they were like, wait a minute, this man is dead. Like, how can how can he be killing people? Mm -hmm. So they found they found out that he had an adopted son. So they literally went to his house and started questioning him and they put him under arrest. And this one he wasn't able to like wiggle his way out of it, but he kind of did in a way because for the first two women that were killed, he wasn't sentenced for them. They were prosecuting him for it, but they didn't sentence him for it cuz they were like there's not enough evidence. For the third woman, they were able to like sentence him because a part of her like um i think it was like hair um was found in his car but for the other women he they didn't sentence him so what they did is like um for the last woman and for the woman that um escaped them they merged them together so they can give him like life in prison uh -huh. so he wouldn't get out yeah but he still didn't get convicted of the first two women so he literally dodged those two but yeah, they found out it was him, and he did say that, um, they did say that they never found the eyeballs. They never knew what happened to the eyeballs, so they're just what? missing. Those eyeballs are not nowhere to be found, <laughs> so they don't know where they're at. 
Damn, and it wow. sucks, yeah, because, I mean, yeah, imagine, like, their family, like, what what did you do with the eyeballs? And there's just nothing, nothing out there anymore. Yeah, he, he did have, like, a large collection of, like, razors and stuff like that that they um, found in his home, so they knew it was him, like, um, the surgical ones, so they can precisely take a away his eyes they found like anatomy books in his house true crime and serial killer books so he was obsessed with like killers and stuff like that um i i, I think that's all they found in his home it, it was mostly all like circumstantial evidence yeah but they still were able to get um yeah they were still able to get him like a life in prison um i don't know if he um he keeps a, Still saying that it wasn't him, that he didn't kill anybody, that it was like set up. But yeah, he's still in um, I think he's uh in law. He oh he's in a psych uh, psychiatric unit, in mm. um Lockbook, Texas. Yeah, I oh. think he might be like eighty five years old oh, now. So he's still but alive. he still says he's yeah he still says he's innocent. Yeah, because he was born in what what did I say in the thirties? So he's like, yeah, he's like eighty. 80 something or almost 90. Damn. And he's still there. He still says he's innocent. Yeah. He still says he's innocent. So I don't know. He's he's just a liar. <laughs> yeah. But if you go like to the next to the next image, you can see like the women, the four women that um oh. well, two women he killed, one three women he killed and the last one was the one that accused him. Um the one that was able to identify him in the like lineup when they give him yeah. she was able to identify him and um you'll see like the women missing their eyeballs some of them are blurred though yeah so you won't be able to see <laughs> this one <laughs> <The gruesome. isn't. laughs> yeah that was the first one he killed yeah this yeah. this was the first one and then the other ones were the second ones but you can see like their eyeballs are like completely missing and they're just beaten yeah. up yeah look at the first one the first one you can tell he had a hard time Cause they always say the first time it's always the the most brutal. Yeah, um, it's like I right don't here, know. Look at how he I don't know like he stabbed her or something. Like it looks like stab wounds. Look all of this. Oh, I, like he beat her up. Yeah. And then um he did he did shoot them all with the shotgun. So it might be like um the mm. spray of the shotgun. Yeah. yeah. You said true. the first one he shot her in the back of the head, right? Yeah, Damn. for most of them, he shot them in the back, so it got part of their head. Oh my god. And he would beat them up for some reason. Ugh. And then the last picture is just like a, the collection of like knives that they found in his apartment or his house. Oh yeah. But like, they, nobody would have found out if it it was him, if it weren't for that last like victim who, just out of nowhere, knew uh the guy that was renting his other home like his other father's home yeah. if she would have never known him and ran to him they would have never collected uh, connected them to because police didn't know his name because he kept going to jail he was in and out of jail for like petty stuff so they did know his name he was well known to the police but nobody like you know put him together with an eyeball psychopath because yeah, none of his know. crimes had to do with any like stabbing or anything like it was just like petty thefts yeah yeah but yeah, he, he killed three of them and then was caught just because of the last woman. Damn. If not, he would have still, yeah, he still would have been killing people. And I still don't understand how he got away with the uh, other two murders. <laughs> yeah, Doki says, imagine if he cut the eyes while they were alive. Do you know how painful that would be? It's a little... <laughs> Yeah, because I our know. eyes are connected to nerves inside our brain, so technically he would have to cut and sever those pop nerves. Pop them out. Oh, yeah, man. he'd have to pop out the eye and like cut out the nerve or the optical nerve. That that it's how crazy. Do you even do that like without damaging like the tissue around it? Like, do you pop it out and then cut it? Yeah, really? that's what they were saying that it had to be like somebody that knew how to perform like some kind of medical surgeries because uh -huh. the precision of it no like amateur can do it and he just uh -huh. did it so well i think um one of them he just didn't care he just like chopped it off like he pulled it out and chopped it but for the other two it was like super precise and they were like 
okay, somebody who knows what they're doing had to have done this. Yeah. But nobody connected it to him. Do you know if he, like, um, took him to his house or, like, where did he, like, where did he kill him? And that's what they don't know uh -huh. um, yet. What There was, like, a lot of, like, uh, that's why it was all circumstantial because they didn't find evidence on him. So the only thing that connected him to the um, the last woman that he killed was that they found, like, her hair fibers in his car on um, the time that she was killed. So that was the only thing. And then the other woman who accused them. So that's the only thing that I had on him. But luckily, they were able to push it through and they got mm -hmm. him sentenced. But they couldn't find any evidence. So they couldn't find any blood in his apartment, any of the actual tools he used. All the tools that he did have in his apartment were all like new or they didn't have like any like blood or evidence. So they couldn't mm -hmm. find like any actual like solid, like 100% solid like evidence. But we all know he did it because, like, his whole family history, his, like, history, um, yeah. you know, points that it was him. But, yeah, that's why he kept getting away with things because he was kind of smart. Like, I guess he was, he knew how to talk his way out of things. Yeah. But there was no actual, like, yeah, like, evidence, hard evidence that were, or, like, the weapon. They didn't, they don't have the, um, the shotgun for it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, I mean, imagine it's a shotgun. It's pretty, like, loud. It's yeah. Like, it has to be, like, a house here and then, like, a house, like, miles. And I think even then, like, they would probably I think cause it's, hear something. I think because it's Texas. You know how Texas has a lot of land? Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, so it's probably, like, a home. Yeah, because they did have, like, a ranch. Like, it was big. And yeah. the other home, his other home that they uh, had was on the same street, but it was, like, further down like way further down so he they own two properties already next to each other oh yeah okay. and they were like separated by like a lot of land that um so it. yeah so mm -hmm. i don't know where he could kill him i don't know where the wife was at That's she was actually true. defending him too yeah she was actually defending him like he would never do that he's a nice person but that's probably because she was always working she was probably working at Hassel mm -hmm. to like pay mm -hmm. all the bills. Yeah. Yeah. She wasn't home. And on the day that um supposedly the other woman um said that uh she ran away from her yeah. and went to the other guy that was living in their home, she said that um that, you know, he attacked her, but the wife was saying, No, he was home with me. It couldn't have been him. She was lying for him too. Yeah. yeah. She was the but, writer yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah, she yeah, was she, the she guy. literally believed she yeah she literally believed her well it wasn't even her husband there was just boyfriend and girlfriend she literally believed him like she's like he would never do that but she didn't even know he was cheating on her so she literally thought he was a good man that's sad. and that's what he made it seem like yeah he made it seem like he was a good person like he had he had a couple of children but um and he never hurt his own children but um he made it seem like he was a good person that's why nobody like thought it would be him mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah they caught him and they sentenced him for at least one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he's still, I don't think he'll be let out of prison because it's a no, psychiatric okay. one. Yeah, hopefully not. Yeah. Hopefully not. He better not there. They, get, they, better, going to Texas. <laughs> they better not pull a, oh, he was a good citizen card. They better not do that. I hate it when they do that. Like, they just give him a slap on the wrist just because he was on good behavior. Like, that don't mean shit. Like, you can suck up suck up to someone and that you'll be like oh we're on good terms or whatever and then the next thing you know they're over there stabbing you in the back <laughs> there, yeah there's, no there's yeah so many stories like that like like someone goes into jail because they did something really bad they killed someone and then they get a little slap on the wrist because they did very well they were very into the community and in, in prison um and then when they leave they go out and do it again it's just yeah like, oh my god that was him with his like petty thefts he'd be like oh i didn't know it was stolen oh i didn't mean to like carry this with me he would just basically make up excuses and they would believe him too Idiot. they would believe him but i think it's because he was like he was smart this man was definitely smart yeah, yeah. and like i told you I mean... the only reason he got caught was because that lady knew the guy that was living his father's home yeah, yeah that's the only reason he got caught Thank you.